So today I want to talk about arrhythmias, which is involving the electrical system of the heart. It's the heart that's no longer in a regular rhythm. It can either stop or speed up or pound, giving you all sorts of symptoms from feeling dizzy, chest pain, sweating, a raising of the pulse rate, a lowering of the pulse rate, and there's a few more as well. So one of the big problems with arrhythmias is there's not hardly any emphasis on the person's diet. What are they putting in their mouth? It's always about the risk factors and they go right to treatment. And that whole system depends on these things called electrolytes. Electrolytes are electrically charged minerals that allow the muscles to contract and relax and the nerve to transmit communication throughout the nervous system. Now, the actual pacemaker of the heart is under control of something called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve comes from the Latin word, which means wandering. So the vagus nerve starts at the brainstem, and you have two of them. They come down through the neck, and they start connecting to different organs. And it's that connection to the heart that controls the rhythm of the heart. And that's part of the autonomic nervous system. The vagus nerve is parasympathetic versus the sympathetic nervous system, which actually comes out through your mid-back, that also uh, connects to the heart, and that will speed things up. The parasympathetic slows things down, but it also controls the rhythm of the heart. And the autonomic nervous system in general really needs vitamin B1. So the question is, what would create a vitamin B1 deficiency? And you guessed it, refined carbohydrates, okay? Refined grains, sugar that will deplete your B1, and that will start creating imbalances within the autonomic nervous system stress that can affect the autonomic nervous system, various stimulants like drinking too much coffee or taking certain drugs that speed up the heart. And many drugs will alter the uh, autonomic nervous system as well. And many drugs will also deplete vitamin B1. So there are really seven things that cause arrhythmia. So you have the hypothyroid condition, which can cause a problem. Hyperglycemia, that's diabetes, or insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is a condition which blocks the electrolyte absorption into that cell. You can also have alkalosis, okay, which could be coming from low potassium. Alkalosis is a pH problem of the blood, and you're just slightly too alkaline. And if your body is too alkaline, you can't absorb certain electrolytes as well as if you have a normal pH. A lot of people that have alkalosis also have low hydrochloric acid in their stomach, and they have a lot of issues with heartburn and indigestion and GERD. Um, and if you don't have the normal pH that you need in the stomach, you can't absorb minerals. Again, you're creating an electrolyte deficiency just from that. So two of the big causes of alkalosis is low potassium and high cortisol from stress. And then we have something called hypokalemia, which is basically low potassium. And this comes from high-carb diets, being on diuretics. Okay, then you have something called hyponatremia. That's a condition where you have not enough sodium in the body. Uh, that could be created by being on a low-salt diet and drinking a lot of water, okay? Because that dilutes this electrolyte, and this can interfere with the electrical activity of the heart and create a lot of heart problems. Then we have number six, hypokalemia. That's low calcium. Calcium is an electrolyte. You can also have arrhythmias if you have hyperkalemia too, like too much calcium. I should have added that to the list. But this could come from not enough vitamin D, a very common problem. Then you have something called hypomagnesemia, okay, which is low magnesium, another electrolyte. You can also have arrhythmias from having gastric bypass because when you bypass some of the colon, you're inhibiting the absorption of certain electrolytes. Or if you have malabsorption, let's say, for example, you have IBS or some type of uh, celiac uh, problem or scar tissue in your colon um, or a history of antibiotics. If you have damage in your colon, you're going to have a hard time absorbing these electrolytes. And eventually that can lead to this right here. If this looks complex, it's really not. It's very simple. What you have to do is restore your electrolytes. OK, so here are some action steps. Number one, restore your electrolytes. You can actually take electrolytes. You can start to increase the vegetables in your diet, seven to 10 cups. This will definitely provide 
uh, for the potassium and magnesium, okay, those two right there. And of course, the sodium, that's easy, just add some sea salt. You may want to acidify the body if you have alkalosis. Betaine hydrochloride is a great natural supplement you can take along with apple cider vinegar to start acidifying your body so you can get more absorption. And number three, very important, avoid refined carbohydrates. When you consume a lot of refined carbohydrates, you deplete vitamins and minerals, especially potassium, especially magnesium. These carbs turn into sugar, they raise sugar, and you become a diabetic. Then you get insulin resistance, and now you can't absorb these minerals like you did before. So you wanna fix insulin resistance. If you're new to my channel, I put a link down below on how to do healthy keto and intermittent fasting. That's, that'll help you with this a lot. Vitamin B1 is also important as well. Uh, you can get this from nutritional yeast. You can get it in a powder or a supplement, but B1 is very, very important in, in supporting the autonomic nervous system. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.